Southern Vanguard Radio. This is DJ John Doe, and to the left of me is my man, Mr. October. Mr. October. Cappuccino Meek. Cappuccino Meek. Homie, what's good? That's right. Yeah, man. It's that season, isn't it? Man, the the uh, my walk to the the side <laughs> door was crunchy than a motherfucker tonight. Those leaves, the leaves around is the... out there. <laughs> I know, right? That crisp air. I was like, yes. <laughs> so the leaves have been. A, it's funny you bring that up because the leaves have been a topic of conversation since we got back from Nashville this oh, I'm weekend. I'm sure. I'm sure. I was informed that yeah. the HOA only allows us to have leaves on the front yard for one to two days. So if you, oh, <laughs> yeah, shit. I t- yo, I told Nat, I was like, look, look, I was like, there's going to be some leaves on the yard for one oh, one or two more man. days, if not longer. I'm like, I need you to pull that out of the rule book and show me that shit. Dude, my that's- HOA <laughs> uh, makes my ass itch on a regular basis, dude. Like they, they, and, and, and they ain't doing nothing but pushing paper, man. They, they love to put a motherfucking Bro. notice in your mailbox. Bro, tell me about and it. And my whole shit is, you know, that's cool. You want to, you want to try to protect people's property values and all that, but my property value ain't been shit since I bought the motherfucking house. <laughs> right. So miss me with that. Number two, tell me what you're going to do with that burnt out crack house in the back of my yeah. subdivision. Yeah, right, right. Somebody's right. house burned down going on two years now. And ain't they that shit with it? They haven't done anything. Really? Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, damn. Man, I, they, the, the HOA, they, they're, they're, uh, their their attempts at being what they're supposed to be right. are futile, if you ask me. Yeah, it's just man. it's just a bunch of, you know. But you got to do something because they'll put that lean on your shit. Oh yeah, you know what oh, I'm yeah. saying. So oh, yeah, oh yeah, you got to do something. But oh yeah, boy, I got I got a bunch of brand new crispy rakes. I'm gonna give my kids <laughs> brand new crispy. I got some new gloves. It's that time. We 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 rolled up. Uh, last night, and they were like, "Wow, Dad, look at all the leaves on the ground." I'm yeah. like, "Y'all said you wanted to rake leaves. Yeah. You about to rake some leaves?" Uh, see, I let Mother Nature do my my <laughs> leaf raking because I don't know. It, it never fails. I have all this shit in the yard, and I come home one day, and all that shit is gone. Right, Cause, right. Because she blew the shit right. over it. And right. somebody else yard or something like that. So I'm I'm <laughs> thankful. I fuck with Mother Nature. Oh my my mo is that is that uh is that leaves. Our mother, mother nature's mulch. So I just try to blow as much of that shit as I can mm. into a flower bed somewhere, and let it, and let it, continue and just let to it die continue out. to yeah. die. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're a smart man, homie. That's why I fuck with you. You know what you're doing, man. Oh man, but man, yeah. it feels good as a motherfucker oh, it's outside, great. though, doesn't it's it? It's great. Get ready to let you got a long sleeve go. shirt on, hey, man. And I just, jeans. I just, and... Yeah, I'm just ready. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Like when I get out of here, it's gonna be, it's gonna be quite nippy. <laughs> So I just, I'm just prepared. I got a little, yes, little jacket in the car too. I ain't fucking around, man. Yes, I know what time it is. It's about to it's be October, the, baby. It's about Libra season. It's meat right? season, Woo, goddamn. Meat. Not Libra the season. Whole the, <laughs> the whole month. King Libra, right here on the mic, <laughs> son. You know it. Oh man, that's crazy. Hell yeah. All right. Well, I, th- I think you had a okay weekend. Uh yeah yeah yeah. yeah on some yeah. birthday shit this yeah, weekend. My with daughter. Uh, yeah. actually, her birthday is uh Monday. Uh, October second. She little no fear. Seventeen. Not a little no fear anymore, bro. Nah, man. Holy Seventeen, cow. dude. That's like, wild, man. Yeah, yeah, man. One of them two thousand babies. I remember when I could hold her with one hand, dude. dude you and me both. That's you know crazy. What I'm but now, you know, yesterday she came downstairs with a kiss T shirt on. Whoa, 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 hold on. Like, she kiss don't the know. band? Yeah, she don't she know. Doesn't know. She, she got a it's Nirvana just, it's shirt. It's just too. cool it's to wear a, rock shirts now. Just, yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, when I took Jayla to to get to get the rust off of her for getting back into yeah, volleyball, yeah. Um, she went to an open gym at her club volleyball uh, yeah. facility, and a girl had a fresh Wu Tang shirt. I had never seen this Wu Tang shirt. Oh, really? So it had the big W on the front. It had the number thirty six on the back for thirty six chambers. What? And the name across the shoulders was Ruckus. And I was like, oh, yo, shit. I was like, yo, you need to sell me that shirt. She was like, you can have the shirt. I don't know who the Wu-Tang Clan. I was like, <laughs> what? I said, what? I was like, I know at least you know who Method Man, uh, oh, uh, dirty, somebody, right. oh, somebody. Dirty, right. You don't know nobody? 
I was mad than a motherfucker, man. That shit fucked me up. But yeah, Jazz came down with the the fresh kiss the kiss shirt on. on. I'm gonna make her a mixtape. She had some fly ass <laughs> jeans on, and she had some open toe heels. Oh no! And dude, my jaw hit the fucking floor, man. Oh no! I wanted to grab the closest rifle I could. Like, I bet. it's it's so surreal, you know. Like you said, one minute they in your hand, and right. the next minute. That's crazy. Yeah, I hit stunting like they dad. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? That's shit crazy. crazy, man. Oh, man. So, yeah, That's happy wild. birthday. Happy birthday, Jazz. You know I love you. Absolutely. Hell, yeah. All right. Good, man. Yeah, it good, was a good man. time. All right. You, um, you, you was, you I was, was in Nashville. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was in Nashville. I came back. So, yeah, yeah we went up to see family and all that. So That's what's was, up. Uh, yeah, so it was good. Cool, cool, pretty, cool. Pretty, pretty low-key. I got to take it's a Tennessee trip here sometime soon. I think P.O.'s going to be up there next Yeah, I ain't going to make it, though. Uh he he invited me to go up. Oh, I was did? really okay. thinking about it too, but yeah. I I forgot about a uh the regional tournament for uh, Jayla and her oh, high okay. school team. It's okay. Saturday. She's back so. on the block now. She's back on the block. Period. Getting right, playing good. time, killing it. So Beautiful. All right. She good. Yeah. Good deal. Good to hear. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get down to business, but, let's but, do but, it. but real quick before we kick off this interview session no here, if this is the first time you're listening to Southern Vanguard Radio, you're we, a soccer. You, <laughs> it's time to get caught up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we drop twice a week, mixed shows on Tuesdays. So, you know, 90 minutes of the, you know, latest and greatest hip hop. You probably do not hear it when you turn on commercial radio in your ride. So, uh, you know, that, that that's kind of what we do here. And then, uh, and then on Thursdays, we have an interview session with an MC or producer or DJ or A&R behind the scenes person, whoever it may be. Right. Uh, let's see. Last week, for example, was a, a producer from Boston named John Glass. John Glass. Uh, the week before that was uh, uh, who Sons was of Silverton. Sons of Silverton out of Ohio. Week yeah. before that was Mr. Lift and Acrobatic from no Perceptionist. Doubt. No doubt. Uh, we had we had a uh, uh, Bernadette Price on a number of weeks ago. Prince we Paul. had Prince Paul, Ella G. Yep. We introduced anyway. a new segment to the show last week, Story Time, <laughs> Story with Southern time. Vanguard <laughs> Story Radio. Time. <laughs> exactly. And we talked about how DJ Element got blocked by Cardi B. Yes, we did. <laughs> Great that fucking was a good, story. That was a good Great one. story. Yeah, Great man. story. So, Shouts out to Blueprint. <laughs> yeah, word, word. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, piece of Blueprint. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, any platform that you can imagine, SoundCloud, iTunes, or I should say Apple Podcasts Apple now. Podcasts, yes. SoundCloud, MixCloud, Stitcher Radio, and then we got some affiliates too, right, Meeks? Yes, uh, Soul Public Radio on the West Coast. Uh, looks like we aired tonight on Soul Public Radio. I got that. Oh, tweet. we do? Yeah. Um, Return of the Boom Bap, WRBB, right here in Atlanta. I am Classic Raw Radio.net here in Atlanta and ATL Hip Hop.com. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. So tonight we have um someone that I was just recently put onto, my mm-hmm. man Eric, thankfully, who is actually a, um somewhat of a he's he's not a new friend, but he's mm-hmm. kind of a new friend in that we, we figured out that we had some of the same musical tastes. Right. You know, Eric came over and hang out, yeah, hung yeah, out a couple, yeah. couple, a uh, couple weeks ago. Oh uh, yeah. So I, I get a text from this guy. I don't know about a month or two ago, and he's like, "Yeah, he's like, have you heard of this this guy out of Charlotte named Loot?" And so you know, I looked at it. He sent me the text, and I I said, "No, I haven't." So you know, popped the joint on. Joint was tough, mm-hmm. and um, you know, went back and did the history. I saw a mixtape from 2012 that mm-hmm. I uh, admittedly uh, did not know about mm-hmm. i guess it should say mixtape he'll probably correct me when we get into it yeah. but uh, i kind of assumed it was a mixtape and then lo and behold sharif from blackfish radio is doing promo for the for one of the singles now jugging okay and then i'm um, sorry i'm sorry that would be jugging ju- i'm sorry did yeah. i pronounce I, it right i got you all right i Luke, got you Luke, Luke, you it's corrected a, me yeah it's a jug okay so when you <laughs> When you pluralize it, it becomes jug. Yeah, got, gotcha. Yeah, thank you. We in the south. I thank got you. you. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, again, Sharif reached out uh, last week and said, you know, hey, would would you want to do an interview? You know, well, Ludi's got an album dropping. I'm mm-hmm. like, absolutely. We're we're fans here, although we're fairly new fans, right? And um, you know, is he available tonight? And he is. Yeah. So without any further ado, yeah, Charlotte's finest, West Charlotte, I I believe, yeah. It, it, is is that correct? I, think that's I believe what I, it is. Okay. Basically, what what's about to go down right now? <laughs> is we about to find out exactly who this dude is. Exactly. We, we just don't know. Luke, are you on the line? 
Caller, are you there? What up, man? <laughs> Y'all some funny dudes, bro. <laughs> Y'all some funny dudes. We, 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 we getting a lesson tonight, man. I'm, I'm so looking forward to it, man. We was looking, uh, listening to some of the joints before you called. Uh, everything is official, brother. I, I want to salute you Word, and congratulate you. I, I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, that nah, nah, nah. We recognize, you know, what's real out here. Uh, that's All that's right. our purpose for doing what we do uh, twice a week. So, uh, so yeah, man, you you yeah, official really in our books. That. Yeah, you you got it, man. And um, like I said, this this will be a lesson for us tonight, man. So let's kick it off. Yeah, so Lou, Lou, just tell us who you are, man, because uh, again, I, I I know a little bit from perusing the internet and obviously listening to the music, mm-hmm. but I mean, tell us a little bit about who you are. Let's just start there. Well, I'm from uh, I'm from West Charlotte, and uh, I'm signed to Dreamville, and I also got a daughter as well. So I was kind of relating to what you were saying, but she ain't 17 yet, though. My daughter's three. Oh, okay. But still, it's like All you right. know. Um, yeah, so I'm from West Charlotte, man. I'm signed to Dreamville. Uh, got a little baby girl. I'm 28, and um, man, I'm just I'm just glad to be here. To be honest with you, bro. All right. Glad to be doing this because I uh, before all that, you know, I was working at Walmart and Target. I also used to fuel planes at at the airport, and um, CLT. actually was really about to give up on this. About to give up on this uh, the rap shit until I got that call from from Cole, and so it's all been a blessing to me. Yeah, I hear you uh got a little bit of a uh uh what is it a, a a reputation for tweeting about your ex your horrible experiences working for Walmart. Can we can you share yeah, a oh few? Oh yeah, man. I, I, hey. <laughs> can you share a few of them? Yeah, man. Actually, uh, a couple of times when I got in trouble, man. I remember uh I was taking a break. I forgot to take my badge off, man, and and I, I ended up falling asleep. I used to work in the garden center, so. I ended up falling asleep on one of the benches that I built for one of the customers, and <laughs> one of my managers came through and saw that. It was like, yo, man, what you doing, bro? You on the, you on the clock? I'm like, no, nah, I'm not on the clock. I just forgot to take my badge off and stuff like that. But, man, it's a lot of crazy experiences, even on a Black Friday, shit like that, man. Yeah. Oh. I know it's crazy in that end. Hectic, bro. Hectic. Yeah. Target, I used to work uh, third shift putting boxes on the shelf one time uh-huh. and uh, I had a manager and you know in the morning it's four o'clock in the morning you, you miss a couple steps you know what I'm saying you forget yeah. to bring some lotion so I go to the lotion <laughs> aisle and I go uh, I go to get some lotion everybody do it and uh, and so when I'm, as soon as I press down on the lotion my manager come across <laughs> my, my supervisor actually she come across the aisle she's like are you stealing? And I'm like, oh man, come on, bro. I'm trying to get some lotion real quick. And she's like, show me your hand. So I try to show her the hand with a lotion wasn't on. And she was like, show me the other side. And by the time I could even turn my hand over, the lotion was already dripping on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm like, damn, this is one of them Craig moments. Like, bro, I'm not trying to get fired over no damn lotion. Bro. Oh, your day off. <laughs> oh, I day off. Like Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Well, thank God for J. Cole, right? <laughs> thank God for J. Cole, man. <laughs> That's what's up. Shouts out, Cole, <laughs> Shouts out to Cole, man. Shouts out to Cole, man. Homie, you know what? Uh, when I when I when I saw uh, the interview had got locked in, uh, I thought mm-hmm. about that fateful night where we almost we came this close to meeting Cole. You remember when? that night? When we were oh, hosting, I do uh, remember that night when we were hosting uh, Mad Lib and yeah. Egon Mad driving Lib and them Egon. around, and uh, the car came. Yo, through Cole's that. manager. What was his name? Yeah, was in the I ride with yeah, us. Yeah, he was in the ride with us. I can't remember oh. his name, but uh, but we oh, ne- Eve? who who Eve Ibrahim. Uh, I don't no. know. Yeah, don't. this is this is this is three or four years ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, I actually, oh, met, okay, okay, five years ago. I don't know if he has the same manager or not. Now, yeah. to be honest. Oh, with you. okay. I'm not, I'm not too sure. I'm yeah, sure. but uh, but needless to say, we didn't make it uh, <laughs> for various <Right>. reasons. <laughs> so I'll just leave that there. But it did. It, it, that memory. About that. Yeah, that memory did pop in my head. Oh, man, that's ill. Hell that's yeah. ill. So, so, Luke, what's, um? I don't know, man. How did you end up getting into this music shit, man? Like, what's your... What's your story? You have a you know a family member, or mother, or father, or brother, sister, uncle, grandfather. Nah, man, was... this is my mom. My mom, like okay. my mom, and uh, well, my parents in general. They they're a lot older, you know, than um than my friends' parents. So I used to get into a lot of blues, a lot of jazz, and um I didn't really get into hip hop until my brother went into the Marines, and uh, he just left back like a treasure trove of stuff. 
And um, it wasn't until I went through like his CDs and stuff like that that I really got into into hip hop. Because usually, like when my brother's around, he don't let me go through none of his shit. Like he don't uh-huh. let me touch it's a real nothing. brother. So yeah. when he left, it was like, oh <laughs> shit, nigga, it's a it's a, a play day. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm about to go through all this shit. Right. But I came across those albums and um and and it just it it, it really changed my perspective in music because like I said I wasn't listening to that kind of stuff at that time you know I was listening to like Temptations and Smokey Robinson and shit like that you know when you when your mom cleaning up on Sundays and they playing music in the morning oh yeah yeah kind of shit. so well, that's a good I foundation wasn't, I wasn't too man yeah that's a good foundation for the hip hop too going back to those oldies right. or what have you uh you know a lot of the stuff that we we uh we yeah, grew up on soul, yeah yeah no doubt yeah that's that was a good foundation too yo what was the first hip hop that like really hit you the hardest uh my brother had a uh he had a uh goody mob cd mm. the soul food uh cd and i was yeah. like yo this is this resonates with me you know like it's so soulful so yeah. so profound and shit like CeeLo ended up being like one of my favorite artists mm-hmm. and uh yeah that that grabbed my attention um uh, he had some Eminem joints in there. Okay. Some uh, Wu Tang ODB is like my top nigga of all time. Okay. Like that's my favorite artist of all, all right. time. Oh really? So always no. be like number one in my yeah. Like who's who's your favorite dead or alive? ODB is always gonna be number one for oh, me. Really? Now why is that? Because I, I really gravitate towards like artists that that wasn't afraid to be themselves and had like this outstanding personality. You know what I'm saying? Like it was no filter on ODB. None. And that's what I love the most about it. Like no filter. Zero. He wasn't afraid film. to be who he was. Even mm-hmm. even to show his flaws, you know? Yep. He put it all out there, man. That's very true. Right. I remember he was on TV doing an interview and yanked his grill out of his mouth. Uh, right man. there on TV while the shit was rolling. I was like, this, this small Yeah, man. Is... Dude had no filter, nah. bro. Like he just wasn't afraid to show his flaws or nothing. Nothing, man. Showing uh um, showing his his food stamps. Oh, on, I remember that uh, right. on MTV. Right. Don't give a fuck. He's real man. Yeah, yeah. ODB was one of the greatest for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I assume Luke that you had somebody there that was was kind of. I mean, because you're you're a. I mean, you know, you're talking to a forty year old and a, a mix. I won't tell him how old you are. I'll be forty six. You'll on be the twenty first of the in twenty yeah, days. Deep. Yeah, in, so in twenty days. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm not I, ashamed. I'm looking good than a motherfucker <laughs> out here. You know what I'm talking about? I don't look forty six. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I fine. Oh, I so, um, so, 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 as I was listening to the music, um, loot, and I, you know, the, the new album, and then going back and listening to the, you know, the the, the first the first joint, I was like, all right. Uh, so this is a this is a younger fellow. I'm like, he had to have somebody around. That was playing this, you know, this what you would call, I don't know, shit from a kind of like my golden era, if you will. I mean, mm-hmm. like that, like mm-hmm. mid nine, you know, early to mid 90s shit, because mm-hmm. the sound was just so, you know, you go back and listen to your first mixtape. I mean, he, he's like he's rhyming over like I and I and shit like that, mm-hmm. you know. So like I assume that, you know, your brother was probably highly influential there with that, you know, with all that. Oh, music. yeah. Like in the beginning, like I said, it was all about me stumbling, uh, stumbling upon what, like, what I, what I found. But when my brother came back, you know, and saw what I was into, it's like he, he was able to further, like, hit me on game to what they were listening to at the time or what he was listening to, uh, uh, currently, and even right. go back to like the '80s uh, hip hop and, and put me up on on what he was listening to and his styles and stuff like that. So right. eventually, yeah, my brother was the one to like to really come in and be like, Oh, well, this is what you was listening to. And, and these are who these people are. Gotcha. So when did you start gravitating toward, you know, rhyming? Like what made you do that? Uh, I want to say like, I remember writing my first rhyme. I was, I was hella young, man. I was, I was really, really young, but like to the point where I knew what I was doing, it wasn't until about middle school. So like early, maybe 2000s. Okay. That's when I really started like, and then it wasn't until my brother came back from the military and, um, he, uh, ended up getting a house for me and my mom to get us out the, out the hood and shit. And so we moved to the suburbs and that was when I formed a group with some friends that I had, uh, connected with and we started this rap group. Oh yeah. And in Charlotte? Yeah. In Charlotte. What was the name of the group? 
uh, the name of the group at the time was like Teen Stars or some shit. Some really, you know, some really like lame shit at the time. But okay. we were like 13, 12. Okay. All right. Well, the the reason we ask is Meeks and I spent um you know some time here and there in Charlotte on some on some uh you know on some sh- on doing some shows and on some hip hop shit. So oh, yeah, good time. You know we're 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 close with some sh- with some Charlotte. Well, I guess they're not in Charlotte anymore, but guys like uh, Jay Cyanide and Gene, Gene Brown. Brown and Super, oh, Su- Superstition yeah. and like that. Those are all good friends of ours. So I was I was curious if like by, by happenstance somehow we might have r- ran across you when you were. You know, when you were oh, on the no, come no, no. up, that's I was all. Hella young at that time. I was like okay. 12, 13. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay, all right, cool. All right, crazy. So, so, well, so what? You just started putting putting rhymes together or songs or like did your brother yeah, kind of put um, you in the mood? We was recording on uh, what's the shit at the time? Sound recorder. You know, where you had to put the boom box or whatever you had up to the computer speaker. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have a mic at the time, so we were just spitting into the into the uh, computer mic. Okay, the little oh, space shit. that you had to uh, to rhyme, and we were just rhyming over like over instrumentals and then at that time uh there was like this folder that used to come out called like how J arms how to be an mc or some shit like that so we would get beats out of that mm. it's like a little folder that uh this dude used to produce i guess and it was like J arms how to be an mc and we used to get a hella beats out of it okay for the songs that came out at that time okay. gotcha because this was back before you know youtube and all that this was like when i meme and and the other streaming stuff was popping at the time like Napster and shit like that. Or, yeah, uh, Napster and all yeah, that. Yeah. So, uh, so, so eventually, you figure you needed you needed to put something proper together. Like, and that that's how the um, you know, that's how the the joint from 2012 came about. Well, yeah, 2012 uh, around that time. Um, that's when uh, I had a, I had started. A, we I was in another group with a group of guys, and uh, we we started to take it serious because I didn't I didn't graduate. I didn't um. I didn't graduate high school, so all my all okay. my boys went to uh, went to college. So I had to think about like really like what what is it that I'm really trying to do? Like I can do this nine to five shit, but what's really going to take you to the next level? And you wow. got to be focused on it, you know? Because yeah. uh, to me, I didn't have nothing else. Wow, I didn't have that high school diploma that I could like flash or you know move up in 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 the ranks and shit like that. So I just really because I draw as well. So it's like one of these two things got to take me to where I'm trying to go. That's what's up. Hmm. That's what's up. So in 2012, I took it serious, and uh, I had a manager at the time too. And um, and honestly, I didn't I didn't even expect anything out of it when I dropped it because I was so used to dropping music on Twitter and it not getting any any buzz or any recognition um, that I, I didn't expect anything from it. Mm-hmm. So when I dropped it, uh, ended up getting to two dope boys, and two dope boys posted it, and uh, that's when it really took off for me. And Pete Rock retweeted it, and that's how yeah. J. Cole uh, contacted me for the first time. Dope. Damn, that's, that's ill. Dope. That's Hell crazy, yeah. man. Hell yeah. That's ill. So so what was your so goal? I first met Cole in, like, 2012. Oh, okay. okay. Off the, off West 1996. Off West 96, yeah. part one. So what what was your what was your idea there? Were you just spitting, just doing joints? Like, is that is that really it? You were just going for yours? Well, no, nah, I, um, I was just listening to like what was coming out at the time. And I was just thinking about, you know, just different things and, and shit that I was into. So I was like, man, I just wanted, I wanted to try something different because honestly, that wasn't my first like project. I dropped a project before that. And it really just, it didn't connect with me because I wasn't being myself. And West 1996 part two, I mean, part one is where I really sat down and was like, you know what, maybe I just need to get more personal and stop talking about what I'm trying to get or shit that I don't have and just really talk about who I am Mm. or where I'm from. And so I did that. And and, uh, how the Nas cover came about was uh, me and my friend was just sitting and was like, yo, what's what's going to get people to talk? Like, what's going to grab people's attention? And at the time, like, because we felt like this project uh, West 96 was going to be our hoods Illmatic. So mm. we was like, how do we paint this picture? And then at the same time, we was like, well, how do we, how do we create some talk? Like, how do we create some barbershop talk? Like, and so we chose the, the Nas cover because we knew it was going to get people to be like, yo, who the hell does God think he is? <laughs> yeah, you know, right. to choose this, to choose this Nas cover. And it got just that. But when you play it, it's like, oh shit, this is actually kind of straight, you know? Right. So but we didn't expect it to go off like that, though. Right, and it did. Right. So, 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 when, so when did you get that call, man? I mean, it's, it's it's one thing to get posted on, you know, on two dope boys, and then you know, Pete Rock's retweeting it, but 
Like when do you get that yeah, it's call? Yeah, funny, man? bro. I was working at Walmart. I was I was working. I was at the <laughs> register, bro. I was texting, and um, I had texting just got at the to register for texting. Are you supposed huh? to be texting at the register, sir? Nah, I'm not, bro. I'm not. <laughs> I had just got in trouble the day before for doing that shit, right? So my boy texted me like frantically, like yo, Cole just hit me up, and and he told me to hit you. He's like, yo, I can't even believe he hit me up, but he hit me up. And mind you, my boy is known for being sarcastic. And and just joking all the time. So I'm like, bro, stop playing, bro. I'm not even supposed to be in my phone. I just got in trouble about this shit yesterday. I could get fired. <laughs> but he kept texting me. So I, when I went on my lunch break, I, um, I was like, yo, let me see what the hell he's talking about. Because he keeps hitting me up about talking about he's talking to J. Cole and shit. And I'm like, I know this nigga's not talking to J. Cole. And so I, um, I see what he was saying. And so I'm like, let me add Cole. Because at the time, you know, I was fresh at Twitter. And in order for you to be, in order for you to DM somebody, you have to be following them. Right. It's so I was like, like, all right, well, let me, let me follow yeah. Cole to see what Scott's talking about. And as soon as I followed him, Cole uh, hit me up in the DM. And I had to check again to make sure it was him. So I looked at the file. I was like, yo, this is really Cole. But he hit me up and he was like, yo, Lou, um, I peeped your tape. I'm really fucking with, uh, with your music and, and, um, and, and, and the shit that you're saying. We're going to be in CIAA uh, the weekend. Uh, would you like to come through to the, through the film or and I'll tell you how I found out about your music? That's dope. Yeah. And Damn. so we went to the Fillmore and he explained how he uh how he found my music. But hold up, hold up, hold up. Before you get to the Fillmore, do you do you instantly like take your 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 Walmart badge off and throw that motherfucker down? No, I, the, I don't, the, I don't, but don't? I'm, I'm gonna tell you what okay. happened. I had I had stayed uh when I was looking <laughs> and and uh when when Cole had texted me, uh by that time when I was looking at it and reading the text and all the other shit. My my fifteen minute breaks were over. It uh-huh. was thirty minutes. I had been in the break room for thirty minutes. <laughs> so I come back and my manager is like, "Yo, like, are you you gonna break for thirty minutes?" And I showed him I showed him the text or the DM that Cole sent me, and and, sh- and he was like, "Yo, take take ten more, take ten more." Oh shit, that's <laughs> dope. Oh, that's yeah, dope. So he looked out. Looked I was about out, to yeah. say I was about to say for future interviews, it might make a better story that you just ripped your badge off and quit right there. Hey, man, shit. But, but that's I wish even, I could have did that. Yeah, that's, no, that's a better story that your manager <laughs> realized the, the, the seriousness of the moment. Yeah, right. yeah, my manager's like, oh, shit, yeah, yeah. take 10 more. Take, take 10, 10 more minutes. That's dope. I <laughs> yeah. like that. <laughs> you coming back? You coming back to work? You coming back to work, right? <laughs> right. You can have ten more you minutes. You get ten more minutes, but right. we need you back you on that register more, but ASAP. Back to this Hell yeah! Right. <laughs> Hell yeah! Dope, 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 dope. All right, so so I'm sorry, sorry for that sidetrack. So so Fillmore and and and, and how? Oh no, nah, so so yeah. I go to the Fillmore. You know, what I'm saying we happy as hell because we ain't never been backstage nowhere. <laughs> and um, so we backstage with Cole, and he's he's explaining how he found the music, and from from what I remember. He was like, they were in Florida and um, a guy was asking him about the hip hop scene in North Carolina. And I can't remember if he said he didn't, uh, he wasn't familiar with what was going on or that he knew, he knew of some people, but who was he missing? And the guy was like, have you ever heard of this guy named Luke? And he was like, nah, I'm a, um, he was like, I'm, I'm going to check him out. So I guess he, he went and looked me up and found me on Two Dope Boys and then found me on, uh, on YouTube. And then when he tried to follow me and hit me up, uh, like I said, when you like early on with Twitter, you had to be following somebody to hit to DM them. So I wasn't following them. So what he did was he looked on my timeline to see who was the closest closest person to me that was following him, which was my boy Scott, and that's okay. why he DM Scott to hit me up to uh, follow him. Damn, he was really that's trying crazy. to get at you, wasn't he? Yeah, right. Yeah. Damn. damn. That's and when I think about that, like to this day, I think about that, like damn, like who the hell goes through that trouble? To, exactly. to to fuck with somebody if they don't really yeah. believe in what they have or some shit like because at that time like like I said like at that time uh, when Cole hit me up because West 1996 had been out and I was kind of like doubting myself with my music and it was like the more time went on I was still kind of like not too sure about uh, just what I needed to be doing or like if I needed to be doing this 9 to 5 shit or should I be in the studio more so that kind of boosted my confidence a little bit Mm. Yo, please tell me you got Scott on the payroll, man. Oh, my boy Scott, man. I still, yo, to this day, man, that's still my boy. Dope. Keep it that way. <laughs> Keep it that way. way. To this Hell day. yeah. Hell yeah. Keep it that way. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's it's it. funny because that night when he, uh, when he, when he, uh, when he brought us to the Fillmore, I brought Scott with me. Okay. 
Because, you know what I'm saying, I felt like like I wouldn't be here if, if Scott hadn't exactly. hit me up, so I brought Scott with me. Hell yeah, that's what's up. Dope. Yeah. Now, Lou, this was still a number of years ago, though, right? So what? What? Yeah, what, that's you, 2012, man. So you just you just been in the wings, like you know, just just plotting and making music, or like what's? I don't want to. I don't want to say uh, even. what's the whole. Not, hold y'all, up, not like, even a lot. Like at, at, at one point in time, uh, like I said, uh, music started to not be my priority, and okay. then I also ended up having a, a kid. I had a kid on the way. I was working at the airport at the time. So gotcha. Music wasn't my priority, and I was in I was in the midst of uh, at the time when I was in a relationship. You know, we was uh, we was behind on some on some bills, so we was about to lose the apartment. And then I was thinking about whether or not if I was moving back with my mom or what I was going to do. So I wasn't even thinking about music. That shit wasn't even in the back of my head. Gotcha. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this was around like 2013, and uh, Creative Loafing did a um, uh, uh, interview on me and the group that I was in called Forever C. And my boy, and, and the guy asked my boy, he's like, yo, so what's up with Luke? Like, where's the new music? And my boy was like, I don't know, but if I had a daughter, I have a lot to write about, a lot to talk about. Mm. And when I read that article, I was like, damn, he's right. Like, mm. I'm so caught up in my life that I'm not realizing I got a hell of a story to kind of tell or paint if mm. I can, you know? Okay. Damn, that's nice. hell. Hell yeah. So, so, so what, you just started working on music again? Or what was the... Yeah, 2013 uh, took me six months, and I came up with uh, West 1996 Part 2, and I was going to drop it in 2014. Oh, damn. So this joint's like three years old? The joint that just yeah, came out? Yeah, three years old. Really? Yeah. Wow. Damn, mm-hmm. man. I finished it in 2013, the end of 2013, and I was going to drop it in 2014. Oh, shit. So... And so the night man. I was... Uh-huh. So, so go back, like... Uh, like what? Ha- what have you been doing up until now that everything is just starting to surface and 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 whatnot? Like I I know you uh you've toured a little bit, right? Yeah, I was on the For Your Eyes Only tour. Okay, so was it just about um was it just about getting the foundation all the way set up for this release? Well, what or? happened was um what happened was all right. So I dropped the. I had to, I, well, I didn't drop it yet, but I I finished the um the project. I was about to drop it in in 2014, and the day I was about to drop it, um, I guess it had got to cold, and the day I was about to drop it, um, Cole gave me a call. It's like two o'clock in the morning, mm. and mind you, I'm about to drop it that morning at like like. 10 maybe 11 mm-hmm. and he's like yo bro I, I heard the project and he was like uh it's like yo this shit's fire man i can really hear your pain your growth like it's there like it's it's, it's so fire and he was like um you about to drop it th- uh in the morning i was like yeah he's like word yo that's cool he's like yo drop it but he's like um mm-hmm. i just want to tell you like man i really feel like i should help like i really want to help you because i really feel like you have something and if you can hold on to it for me so I can get it to the hands of the right people so they can do it the right way. If you can hold on to it for me, um, he's like, yo, man, I, I, I'm going to do as much as I can. But he's like, it's up to you. Okay. Shit. I was like, at first I was like, man, I was debating like, man, damn, I just, I just did all this work. And I'm like, oh, right, man. Right. And yeah, I had already announced it. I had already announced that I was going to drop it that day. So mm-hmm. that was kind of what I was battling with. Like, damn, how I'm going to look to my fans if I, if I don't drop this shit. Right. So but what, I was like, but so, this is like a once in a lifetime thing. Like I'm yeah. like, damn, this is cold. Like I don't have like we don't really have that much of a backing. Like we just dropping shit, you know, for the hell of it. Right. So I'm right. like, either I'm like, yo, and then I, I just had a daughter, so I'm just thinking, like, damn, like this could be my opportunity, you know, like this could be something, this could be a blessing for me. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? Fuck it, <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to it. Was there and any was there any incentive or you just just off the strength of Cole asking you to do that? You know, let me just let me just hold on to it. Like No, it was a lot of things going through my mind. Like I said, man, I was I was just thinking about a lot of things and I felt like, you know, it would be better if I just held on to it. Okay. And honestly, uh that was the best thing I did. Okay. Got you. Looking so, back, but like I said, so what took so long was um so before with West 1996, we were just pulling uh, shit off YouTube and, and just releasing it. So now uh, with West 1996 Part 2, and this was before I, I got signed and everything. And um, 
So he called again. I'm sorry. So he called again, and uh, he was like, "Yo, so uh, I'm about to go on this tour." He's like, "Yo, if you um, if you working, you know, I can I can look out and and you know pay you for the days that you miss." And I'm like, "Nigga, I just got fired two days ago." Hmm. I'm Man. like, "Hell yeah, I'm, I'm down." And this was the uh, uh, the Forest Hill Drive tour. So oh, I was shit. I was I went on the Forest Hill Drive tour, but I was like behind the scene. Just he wanted me to see how like you know things work. Yeah, and how shit and shit happens. And then so, uh, and then eventually, uh, Eve hit me up and wanted to uh, put Still Slumming on, on Revenge of the Dreamers 2. Oh, shit. That and that's was, when I was like, Cole's yo, manager? This, is, this is pop, this is lit. Yeah, Cole's manager. Okay. He's like, yo, man, uh, Still Slumming is fire. He's like, yo, you, you, you want to put it on uh, Revenge of the Dreamers 2? And at first I was kind of nervous because, you know, you got um, you got Omen, uh, Boz, and and Cosmo. You got Cole. And when I heard like some of the songs, I'm like, damn, I don't know if still slumming the fit in there. Cause like I said, like at this time, I'm still kind of not too really too confident in my music. So I'm like, I don't know, I don't know if still slumming gonna be a nice fit. Like I, I feel like if they put still slumming on there, niggas gonna be like, oh, who the fuck is this? Right. But um, right. But they loved it though. So it was just damn, like that's said, crazy. It's just, it's just crazy how it come about. So so Luke, what's up with the what's up with the production team behind you, man? I mean, you have a like are they, these all guys you've been, you know, working with for a while? No, or? like I said, bro, like I got all these songs on YouTube. And so now w- when I got signed, it's like it is crazy because you go from having you, you come into a situation with a complete project and then now you have to do it the right way by getting samples cleared and right. finding these producers. And some of those producers I wasn't able to I wasn't able to find, and some of those samples didn't get cleared. So then you go from having this complete project already into your situation to realizing that your shit is so incomplete. Oh right. So well, that's what happened. It, it the time consuming was getting the samples cleared, going back to redo songs, and 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 trying to find these producers to do uh, paperwork and stuff like that. Right. So who was it that flipped the Portishead sample, man? Who was Elite. That? Oh, okay. Elite, yeah, he's on Dreamville, and um, yeah, he flipped the Portis head sample. I remember when he when he uh, when he played it to me, I was like, "Yo, this is fire as hell." Oh, man, I'm I'm a ma- I'm a huge Portis head fan. And Portis is dope. Yeah, man. When I, when yeah, I he heard... flipped the hell out of that. Um, yeah, he did. Beat, bro. Yeah, he did. I'm actually kind of salty a little bit, Luke, because I was hoping that joint was going to be a little bit longer than it was. I need like a part two or something on that. Right? Yeah, man, it I was just know. an interlude, bro. The, <laughs> and the crazy thing is, that was one of the songs that originally I had that the sample didn't get cleared. So uh-huh. we had to. So he we did a, a Portis head sample, and I remember asking like, "Damn, like it's another sample song. So are we going to be able to get this clear?" And at first, it, it I didn't think we was going to get the Portis head sample clear, but we ended up getting it cleared at like the very last minute. So every song on West 1996 Part Two got redone at least twice. Oh, interesting. All right. So it, yeah, it, 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 because I didn't know if I was going to get the samples cleared or not, and I was kind of gotcha. afraid of redoing a whole other project because I didn't want to redo a whole other project and it not have that same feel because I was in a different place. You know, right, right, right. I didn't want to lose the vibe. I didn't want to lose the you know the reason why everybody is in love with the project because, you know, you can hear the struggle, you can hear the pain, and I don't right. want to lose that because I was in a different place. It's really interesting, man. So, I mean, the, the, the but so the production across the project is pretty varied then because it sounds cohesive, I think, from a sound standpoint. Like, sonically, it sounds right. very cohesive. Right. So that's, that's crazy, yeah. That, uh, they were all, at, at first they were all from YouTube, and then eventually... um I was able to like link with a with a few people like Elite, and I was able to link with uh with Cam Obi, and um and uh, uh, this guy named D Shiggy from from Syracuse, and a guy named Savion from Memphis. Who who from Memphis? Savion. C uh C. Oh, might be Nashville. Might be Nashville. No, is it is Nashville. it C E Y Beyond? No, nah, it's it's S. With okay, I, I, I'm I'm from Memphis. So Meeks, Meeks heard Memphis. So yeah, it's, 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 the, the, are you from Memphis? Yeah, yeah. yeah originally uh, born and Memphis raised in love, Memphis. Man. Yeah, uh, but I I thought you said I I thought you was talking about this cat. I know C Beyond. He he fucks around mm-hmm. with with the music and shit like that. So you got you got some ties to Memphis. Oh, 
I, I again, I wish you the best, man. You, <laughs> you, you keep good people around you, man. That's what's up. Hey, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Man. I'm, I'm like I said, man. I'm, I'm, I'm learning as I go, man. All this been, it's been all trial and error for me mm-hmm. so far. But I'm, like I said, I'm just learning as I go, and and just thankful to be, you know, in the presence of, uh, of great people. You on a hell of a run, my man. I yes, want to sir. tell you, absolutely keep that shit moving, man, for real. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. So, so Lou, what, what's your what's your relationship uh, with with uh, with rapper Pooh like? Because when when uh, when we were talking to Sharif to get the interview set up, Pooh got in the mix to get everything kind of scheduled. Or is he a, is he managing you or like what's the relationship? Yeah, yeah, Pooh's there? my manager. Okay, I, I met him off uh, off the project as well, and uh, and when I first met him, like he he's really like when I first when I first met him, he put me on one of his songs for his project, and. Um, and after that, like we just we just clicked, and he always put me on game, and and ever since then, like he's literally been like you know no pun intended, but like a uh, uh, a bigger brother to me, you know what I'm saying? So right. <laughs> I always, you know what I'm saying? I always kept him around, and I always you know reached out to him every now and then uh, when I could. So when I uh, when I finally got into the situation, you know, I just wanted a little guidance because I like I didn't know what I was getting into. I was just trying to you know figure out um you know how everything works and 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 just what to do and so i, I hit up Pooh, and uh that's how that's how we kind of work things out and uh also met doe through Pooh. okay oh you were on the joint with apollo well. brown you were on the ep that Pooh did with apollo brown uh, a few years yeah back. yeah Ah, uh, yeah we played a couple of joints off that ep no that was a great record man oh yeah i didn't realize yeah. that i didn't make that connection yeah Damn, that was my dope. first time meeting Pooh. okay uh what was the was the um was the the it was a happy birthday thomas one oh, i think gotcha okay all right cool all right dope man well yeah you're in good company brother hell yeah there's no doubt yeah, about bro. it there's no doubt about it so so what's the rest of the year look like for you i see you got a tour coming up with man tell us about the never had shit tour now. man that title's ill now, oh, now yeah, i want to tell yeah, you i want to tell you right now Jid, yo Earth gang and chas french yo myself. the name of this tour <laughs> alone the motherfucker ought to be epic you know what i'm saying <laughs> like that is the greatest like i want a shirt from that tour yeah right <laughs> just just to be able to rock the, the never had shit tour well yeah because see jizz jizz uh <laughs> album is called never story and uh and one of the songs it, it, it starts off as uh never had shit so Man. i got that uh played a part with it yo too. that's so, but yeah, nah, that that's is a so sick dope. ass a sick ass name for yeah. the for the tour that's dope man that's dope you looking forward to that man like you 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 ready oh, to, yeah, you ready man. to get on the road and get out there and grind definitely that's most definitely up. this is yeah. where it start right here hell yeah you know what i'm saying hell this is where the yeah. groundwork starts man bring i'm gonna tell you bring that shit every night luke yes sir no matter oh, you what, know what city what stage how shitty the sound yeah, is three people five thousand i don't people, give a whatever. fuck bring that shit and and whoever's out there will remember your name, man. Just do that. Yeah, real shit. Yep. Real shit. That's what's up. What's what's the, what's the camaraderie like at Dreamville right now, Lude? I gotta imagine it's um. That shit should be pretty high. Should be pretty good. Should be pretty good right now. You guys are doing a lot of things collectively. You know. Oh like yeah. Things are shaking out. It's like a big well. family, man. Yeah. It's like a big family, and everybody's doing their own thing, own tours, and. It's a lot. It's a lot going on, but it's all love at the same time. Sure. So, so what's the uh, what's the deal with Slum County? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I was just looking at that. Oh, that's my little no that's my little imprint, and um, yeah. okay. I'm really trying to, you know, I'm just really trying to build a culture here because, like I say, um, like we we have artists in Charlotte, but it's not as big as uh, Atlanta or mm-hmm. you know New York or California. So I really just want to build an imprint to just really bring the culture together and really show people what we have here. Okay, that logo's ill too. Who did the logo? You did the logo? No, my boy Mark. Uh, that I went to middle school with. I, he been my boy since middle school, and I told him. I told him a long time ago. I was like, bro, like if if you fuck with me, man, I can't promise you a million dollars, but I can I can guarantee you a way to get to it. You know right. what I'm saying? Ah, so yeah. he stuck with me, and when I better. when I got signed, and I was able to do the Slump County, uh, I, I, I shit, he was the first nigga I gave my check. One my uh. My, my checks too. Dope. Oh, beautiful. Hell yeah, that yeah. logo's ill, man. Yo, so they that's your so that's your imprint. Uh, what, what's the, what's the plans? Uh, what's what's releases coming down the pipe for 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 Slum County? I don't have I don't have no releases for Slum County yet because I'm still trying to build on me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But 
we've been working on a lot of a lot of different things because I don't want it to be just hip hop. Because like I said, I draw as well too. Okay. So I just wanted to be I wanted to be a, a, a place and a space for a lot of creatives and you know uh, uh, like for film and photography. Yeah. All kind of stuff, man. Well, yo, man, I'm. A, I don't I'm want to just send, be limited to. I'm gonna send some shit your way, man. I'm trying to get signed. <laughs> nah, I'm do trying, that, bro. I'm trying to get put on. So <laughs> do that, bro. I got you. I'm. I, I don't. I don't know if you fuck with what I'm doing you know or even. Yet, but I can get you a chain. Well, shit. <laughs> That's even better. I've been, I've been I've been wanting a keychain. A keychain. Key 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 hey, I get you a little keychain. Hey, that sounds like a deal to me. Pewter, pewter <laughs> keychain. You know what I'm saying? I'm with I it. I get you a little keychain and a t-shirt. I'm with it. Y'all heard it right here. Eddie Meeks coming out on Slum County, uh, 2020. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I fuck with it. That's what's uh, up. That's dope. That's dope. All right, Lou. Well, look, man, oh, yeah. we've taken uh, uh, enough of your time tonight. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Um, I don't know. You got nah, any man, last words or you got, you got anything you want? We always like to, you know, we always like to say this is a place where you can get some things off your chest, you know, good, bad, or ugly. Right. So if there's if there's anything that you'd like to leave, leave the people with other than where to go cop your shit, you know, th- this is the time for because, you know, we're going to wrap yeah, it up. Nah, man, I just, right. just want to let people know, you know, um, to be greater than your circumstances, you know, continue to thrive. Mm. Say you know, that again, man. Say that, one, say, that. say that one more time, Luke. Be greater than your circumstances and continue to thrive. Man, shit might be ugly yeah, right think, now man, and I, today, but it ain't got to be like that forever. That's the realest shit nah, ever, man. it don't. Man. It really don't. Man. It really don't. Because like I said, I was on the brink of like giving up and, you know what I'm saying, just sticking to my nine to five to, you know, do that sacrifice to take care of my child. and. hmm I gave it one more shot and and now I'm here. So that's why, you know, I try to give it everything. I give it my, my hundred percent. Cause to me, I, I, I think like, damn, like I, I shouldn't even be here right now, Mm. but I am here. Yeah. So I got to give it my all, you know? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. That's dope. Um, That's it. um, You can get the project at slumcounty.com or dreamville.com. And and when you listen to it, that's what I want people to get from it, to be greater in your circumstances. Okay. Despite right. what people may think of you or, you know, your background or whatever. Dope. Right. Just continue to thrive. Lou, real quick, you you doing uh you you got any anything coming down with uh with Pete Rock? Has he has he blessed you? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Man, I wish. When I first dropped that project, he he told me that we was gonna work on something. Stay on but, him, um, man. Stay on him. That'll yeah, be that'll I be wish, an awesome uh, look, man. Pete Rock and Night Wonder. I wish I could get oh, some kind man. of project going on with that. Don't even people. worry about it, man. Consider it done. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Don't bro. even worry about we'll it. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And Cole. Coming. Yep. And Cole, Cole right? too. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. We'll see. Word. Yep. Word. Hey, uh, real quick on some DJ shit. Uh Lou, you gonna have some vinyl uh-huh. for this joint or no? You say some vinyl? Yeah, you're gonna have vinyl? On, 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 I on, might, on man. Okay. I gotta talk to somebody about it because a lot of people have been asking me about it. So we right. we might throw something on the Slum County site. Okay. Okay. Some cool. Little, uh, one-off joints or right. uh, limited edition. So I right. talked to somebody about it. All, All right. right. Cool. All so right. Slumcounty.com. Word. Slumcounty.com. Word. Lou, thank you, man. We appreciate you. Nah, thank y'all, man. I really appreciate it. I appreciate y'all having me. Yep. Sir. And we're going to be looking out for more and more from you, man. Keep grinding, okay? Yes, sir. No doubt, bro. All yeah. right. Yeah. Lou, Lou, hold tight. We're going to wrap right. it up. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be back with you in just a second. We're going to wrap it up. All right? Okay. All right, cool. All yeah. right. Mr. Meeks. I love it. Man. I love it. Uh, what, what what do you say? Young boy what? what is the it? Young Boy Gang young is boy in gang. full effect. Absolutely. Now we can add Luke to the likes yeah. of the God Fahim, Nolan yeah. the Ninja, and and anybody else that is as young as considerably younger than us. And keeping this shit alive. For real. Shouts out to the Young Boy Gang. The young boy gang. They too are the guard. Yes, they are. For All real. All right. Twice a week, Meeks. Yeah. Twice a week, though. Southern Vanguard Radio. Yeah. South in your mouth. SouthernVanguard.com. Uh, Southern Vanguard on Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. You got it. Yeah. All right, y'all. We out. Peace. Peace, y'all.